Well, hey guys and girls, Christy Clemens with E320 Treasures. Golly, I look like I just woke up. <laughs> I didn't. I'm on my second cup of coffee. I'm off today. But I look like I just woke up. Well, I have this really great buffet back here. And let's see. There we go. It's really, really heavy. Um, it's missing some hardware, so we'll have to replace that. Um, I sanded the top, so we'll stain it. I'm going to start with drop cloth and maybe use some patina on the bottom and the legs, perhaps. We'll see, uh, we'll see how that goes. Dixie Bell's Voodoo Gel Stain in Black Magic. When in a pinch, plastic baggie will work to save your fingers. It's water cleanup, but you want to protect your nails still. Or they, it'll look like you've been digging in the dirt. I'm going to go wash out my sweatshirt where I just leaned into it. Then I'm going to go put my freaking apron on. I always think, oh, I'm just going to do this real quick. I won't get any paint on me. That is never the case. My husband laughs every time I go dashing out of here because he knows that means I lean into something, I flicked it. I mean, you guys are painters. I'm sure you know. So I'll be real honest, this looks darker on camera than it does. I am not liking that so much. So I'm going to wait until it dries and then I'm going to put some of the no pain gel stain over it because I think that's going to give it a richer tone. But I'm going to let it dry completely first and then we'll work on that again. So one of the coolest things that Dixie Belle has is this patina paint. It comes in iron, which this is bronze and also in copper and it has little metal metal particles in it that you mix with their two sprays this one is green there's also a blue and when you mix them they have this chemical reaction where they actually look like rust let me show you real quick i did this candlestick yesterday and it's got a mix of iron and bronze paint and then i sprayed it with green this is the iron and then you can see the green more or more of a greenish blue. It's the same spray, but I just used two different paints on it. Let's do iron. I want the orangey. Uh, I want the orangey look. So you always want to stir them really well. And I have various brushes here. Let's go with this little one here. We're going to cover the feet in the iron patina paint. You can't see my butt, can you? Be weird. I'm going to save some room for the bronze. I'm just going to come up on this drawer a little bit too. Whoopsie. This is a little bit runnier than the paint, so it, it, it will drip. Now, this one is going to have brush strokes. And I'm not looking for a brush stroke look, so I'm going to come across with a clean brush and just kind of tap so that it mutes the brush strokes a little bit and it's not so apparent. It gives it more of a hammered look. Get another clean brush and shake my bronze. Golly, it's a good thing I'm wearing this apron. Holy crap. So I'm just going to come in here, in these little areas here, maybe mix it a bit to where they're kind of together in there. Oop. 
to get the right can. And I don't know that I'm going to like it at that high. But we'll decide it for sure later. I'm just going to move that so I don't continuously accidentally dip in it. All right. Get that little corner there. Okay. So while my patina paint is drying, I decided to go ahead and paint with drop cloth across the front and the sides and then give the drop cloth a second coat and come back with a second coat on the patina because when I spray I don't want to mess with this again so I need to have the paint on here in order for that to work oh kind of went over that area didn't really mean to but maybe it'll be okay got a little cray cray on that one And normally I go in very straight brush strokes, but I'm gonna try something new and do brush strokes in all kinds of different ways to create a little bit of texture. I hear that's what it's supposed to create anyway. Now I can come back over this. If I get it like up here, I got a little crazy. I didn't mean to really paint that. I can go back over it with patina paint. It's not my favorite brush, but all my others are mid-job right now. And when I'm painting or when I'm doing a job, I don't like to waste my paint. So I generally put them in a bag and keep them until I'm finished with that job. And all my good ones are dirty. So I need more. I need more. Okay, so we have our second coat of drop cloth on. It's put on all different kinds of brush strokes, and I do like the look of it. I mean, uh, there's a little, a uh, few areas where I might touch it up. It looks a little bit thin right here, and maybe right here, but that, I can touch that up anytime. Right before, I mean, at least, as long as I do it before a clear coat. So, actually I may, yeah, clear coat this way. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our patina paints. So I bagged up my brushes so I didn't have to wash them out. I've got one for the iron patina, one for the bronze patina, and then one to come back and tap it so that it doesn't have uh, the brush stroke look. I'm not going for the brush stroke look. So I'm gonna dip in my iron patina. And I don't really like that white on that corner. So we'll come up. In there, come over there. Remember, we want it to be wet when we spray it. I'm blocking everything out. I'm gonna come over here and do this side of the foot and maybe up a little bit into that on that side. Yeah, not a whole, whole lot. Oop, wrong pan. Y'all hear that background music? No one can hear Billy Ray Cyrus Old Town Road enough times. All right, coming up in here. Well, I didn't really mean to touch that drawer, but since I did, we'll come down in that corner. And then up here, where I didn't really mean to do that the first time. All right, so I'm coming back now with my bronze. And we'll mix it up in here. Just coming up. 
coming on through here, mixing it some with the iron, because that'll give it an even more, uh, a more different look. Mix that a little bit up in there. I'm gonna come back with my clean brush. I don't think that was originally my clean brush. Oh, I hadn't actually used that brush. Whoopsies. This is my brush. All right, so I'm coming back through and tapping this so that the brush strokes are not all we see. This gives it a hammered look. And you wanna do this while it's still wet. My daughter has a little friend coming over and they can't find her house. So. <laughs> trying to do a video and tap and see this is drying on me it's dry here in texas so it's drying Let's see as fast as i can put it on so i'm going to come back through and see if i can make that look right Okay, I'm actually gonna spray that with a little bit of water. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do, but I'd rather spray it with a little bit of water and it still be wet as I'm putting my uh, patina spray on it. There we go, it's a little bit better. I don't want it to look like I painted this on. I want it to look like my wood rusted. Okay, coming back that way. All right. That water is reactivating it. I don't really want it to run, so I'm stopping the runs with my little brush here. And it's giving it a hammered copper hammered metal look. So it's wet. This was water. So I'm coming back with my green patina spray. All I'm using is the green. I'm not going to use the blue spray at all, but because I've used two different colored patina paints, it's going to give it two different colors. So we're going to start with our little bit of the guy on the side over here. That's pretty good coverage right there. So we're going to stop and wait until it is dry and then see if that's all we want to do to it. Okay, I wanted to show you what it's doing so far. Remember, these are two different color paints where you see the brown and orangey rust is the iron patina. And then where you see that bluish color, that's the bronze patina paint and the green spray is all I've put on it. So you can see where it's kind of coming together there. And then over here as well, in that corner. And I don't really like the way this is blending in, so I may, I don't know, play with that in a little bit. Okay, so I played with this a little bit before coming on camera. See how we have blended this together a little bit better than say here. This is very rust and then very paint. So I wanna mix these together a little bit better. I wanted to kinda of try with this one up here just to make sure it was plausible. Okay. So I'm going to start here and let's see, got my dry, bu dry brush, dry brush, and I'm going to spray it along this edge right here and then just kind of grab it and mix it. 
I don't really want to mess too much with this. It's okay if it runs, but I, I, it's really just this line I want to jack with up here. Okay, so I'm going to dry this off and then get it and just kind of I'm just gonna play with it, so just watch. Drop cloth brush dipped into my drop cloth. And I'm gonna model that edge. That's mottle, not model. Mottle, mottle, like screw it up and mix it together. Got my dry brush here so we're mixing 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 and then I've got my this brush so I'll come back up here and I'm just gonna keep playing with this line until it looks like they're cohesive together a little bit better I can't work alone. So I'm actually getting my brush or my towel and wiping with what's on here in order to mix this a little bit better. Sorry. So there's my drop cloth. That's a little heavy down there, so I'm gonna just wipe it away straight with the towel. And then come in with circles or straight lines or whatever to just make sure that brush gets dry until this just looks like it kind of mixes one with the other. I don't want to wipe away all of my patina. looking a little bit more mottled. Okay, I'm gonna get a clean edge of my towel and kind of wipe this back. It's still a little wet from when I sprayed it. So I want, I want it to be able to blend a little bit better. I still have plenty of rust down here, but as it comes up and mixes into the paint, it's got a little more mottled appearance where it's blending better. Okay, with the, with the Voodoo Gel Stain, one thing you don't want to do is do your little swirly marks and then run and grab a baggie to protect your manicure. You want to already have that baggie because it had time to sit here and do this. So when I came back to wipe it clean, it's got little swirly marks. I don't like the way that the stain looked on it anyway, so I'm coming back over it with some Dixie Belle No Pain Gel Stain in Espresso color and see if we can fix the little swirls. This is oil based and honestly has a better staining feel to me. I like to get my little sock ugh, with my baggie because everybody's got those, those uh, socks with no matches, right? Let's see, can we go over that? Looking like it's covering it. That looks a lot better. I really like that. And once you have this on, if it's not dark enough, you think you might need another coat, make sure you wait until it completely dries before you jack with it again. Because if you come back deciding that you've missed a spot, it will wipe off everything around it. You know how I learned that? 
the hard way. I was actually told that, but then I forgot that. <laughs> I am probably going to come back and give this a second coat because I really like the dark, but I'd like it to be a little bit darker. So we'll wait, and I can still see some swirly marks in there. I don't think you'd notice some unless you knew what they were. But uh, can you see my crack? <laughs> Was I showing crack? I don't know. I'll have to go back and edit that out. All right. That's good. We're going to leave it at that for now. So as I do sometimes, I did some off camera work and I ended up going ahead and giving it a clear coat. So it is coated and I'm ready to put the hardware back on, but um, so this piece was missing the lengthy piece. So it only had the little things here. I um, went and searched through my pile of hardware and I had some very similar to what was already on here in abundance and it happened to be the right size. So. I picked out four. I went ahead and painted them with the, with the bronze patina paint, and it lowers my camera. It looks really good on there. So I'm gonna put the rest of the hardware on. I'm still gonna give the top a second coat of espresso tomorrow when it's really, really good and dry, and then we'll gator hide that, and um, it'll be ready to go. Well, here's the finished product. Um, I did come back and put a, a second coat of espresso, no pain gel stain on the top. And as you can see, whoops, excuse my hand. It's got a beautiful, rich, dark finish. So really happy with that. So to recap, we have two coats of drop cloth here. We have the first coat of the patina paint in iron and bronze. Then we came back and put one more coat of that on here and sprayed it with green patina spray. And on the top we used no pain gel stain in espresso. And there's two coats of that on the top. And then coated it with gator hide. So it is ready to go to the shop. So click to subscribe, hit your notifications button for more videos from E320 Treasures. Thanks for watching.